in the last video we took stock of our 2005 Legacy GT and determined the project probably is not going to continue it's most likely not worth putting the money in especially with it having a salvage title I've looked into possibly getting an EJ uh, 20X uh, JDM 2 liter to swap into the car I can find those for eight to nine hundred bucks I actually have a deal going right now I'm not sure how serious it is with a, another Subaru enthusiast that wants to trade me one of my legacy shells for the engine but it's about a I think he's about seven or eight hours away he's up north so not sure how that's going to pan out it might make for a good series of videos uh road tripping up north with the legacy and coming back with that uh jdm ej 20x but uh that's on the back burner right now so what we're going to do today is take stock of patches patches is my 1995 legacy l wagon it is a 2.2 liter five speed manual i bought patches in 2011 i believe or 2012 so been a while patches was in a front end collision i bought patches for 450 dollars I bought patches from the original purchaser of the car that bought patches brand new in 1995. So I got all the history on the car basically from new. The entire time they owned the car, they did two tow and belt water pump services. They had put one clutch in it. They put one alternator on it. They put a power window motor on the driver's side. Regular oil changes, fluid changes, brake changes aside from that that was it they had no major failures no major repairs other than the normal uh, routine maintenance i believe i purchased patches with about 260,000 miles on the clock give or take i cannot recall exactly but uh i'm gonna have some pictures up i found the other day uh, the first picture is loading patches up on the trailer as you can see, the front end is smashed in. Uh, sorry about the quality of the picture. I believe this was taken on a, I believe it was a Droid X. That didn't even sound right. Droid, uh, Droid Razor. It was a Droid Razor Max phone at the time. So picture quality at the greatest. Uh, I believe the next picture should be fitting the junkyard bumper. Uh, the first for junkyard bumper I ended up getting for patches, which was a regular base legacy uh, front bumper with small fog lights. Then should be a picture of patches sitting in the shop after I put my 2004 WRX wheels on patches that had previously been spray painted by the original owner of that car. Now there should be a picture of patches with the 2004 WRX uh, front bucket seats installed. When I got patches, the driver's seat was completely destroyed just from, uh, well, the owner was kind of overweight, so in and out over the, all those years, broke the seat frame, and um, they had a lot of pet, so it was a ton of pet hair in the car. It took me forever to get that out and detail the car, and they had put some odd aftermarket double den radio in and messed up the dash. I had to replace the whole dashboard with a junkyard one, and locate a factory radio i found the double stack cd player uh radio out of a, I believe it was a 98 legacy gt wagon then uh hood came off of either an outback or a legacy gt that grill is from an outback took the outback in off plastic dipped it years and years ago the current front bumper is a legacy gt uh late model legacy gt front bumper I had to replace the radiator support, radiator, AC, um, condenser, and this fender, which is a darker metallic green. I do have a white fender here that was on my 98 Legacy GT sedan that I'm going to put on here. So I have a white fender, a white hood, and that white um, JDM uh, front bumper. Patches is missing a quarter light here. I had to steal it for my 98 
uh, Legacy GT sedan when I sold it because I could not find the original. Not worry about that because I have a set of JDM uh, projector headlights. I have the JDM uh, Legacy GTB grill and that Legacy GTB uh, front bumper with fog lights. The 2004 WRX wheels have extremely dry rotted Goodyear tires on them. The two fronts do not even hold air. I have to keep inflating them uh, once every two weeks or so just to keep them from going completely flat. Not worried about that because I have the Advan RG2s, 17-inch uh, Advan RG2s that were on my Legacy GT. I did not sell the car off those wheels. Those, car, those wheels will go back on patches. So not worry about the wheels and tires. As far as that, there are scratches, dents, and dings. Typical of a 1995 model. Paint's burning off the top here. Missing this corner of the roof rack, which I do have to replace. Our hatch is gold because, well, I forgot. Hatch's original hatch is right here. Had a massive dent in it. This is the nicest one I could find at the salvage yard, but it does have some rust under here. So I'll probably be replacing it again with probably the white hatch off of my 96 Outback. Hopefully this wind's not uh, getting too distracting on the uh, video. Rear bumper, the little uh, protector is peeling up. Not too worried about that. I've got a couple back, uh, a couple rear bumpers to choose from. All in all, I'm not worried about Patch's appearance whatsoever. I'm just showing you guys the issues. Tail lights are cracking here and here. Common issue on these. I do have two uh, really good quality or really good condition um, junkyard lights in the shop to put on it. This big den here, I don't know what it is about these wagons. They always seem to have a dent back here. The yellow bean had a dent back here. Uh, just about every other wagon Subaru I bought had a dent here or in the hatch. Patch just happened to have both. Not worried about that. Other than that, that's basically it on the outside. We've got cracks in the windshield, two cracks. Not worried about that. We have no... Um, there's no uh, safety inspections in South Carolina or emissions testing or anything yearly inspection, and they don't bother you with cracks in the windshield the only time they care is if your windshield's missing pretty sure <laughs> pretty lax uh we got some wear on the top of the door cards that's not too bad i believe this is from uh their dogs uh toenails we have our 2004 wrx buckets they could use a good cleaning The passenger front door card is getting uh, dry rotted as well and cracking along the top. I have a crack in the console lid. Not worried about that. I'm pretty sure I've got a couple of those. Check out the custom stitched Alcantara parking brake uh, cover and shift boot. Overkill, right? For a $450 car with right at 300,000 miles on it. But hey, it is what it is. It was missing a shift boot, and I bought this one, I believe, from Redline Goods was the company name. If they're still in business, I'm not sure. But cigarette lighter works. Ashtray has a mysterious fastener in it from something. Radio works. Almost all the lights are burned out. The clock illumination, all of that. I don't know if some of you have seen. I'm going to try to find pictures and put it up. But on these older Subaru radios... They have these really dark green uh, backlight to them. And my 98 Legacy GT had the same issue where the display was not illuminating anymore at night. So at night you couldn't see uh, what radio station you were on or what the time was on the clock. So I went through and retrofitted LEDs in the radio and the CD player on the bottom here.
And I went ahead and did the HVAC and the cluster. So I'm probably gonna be doing that on patches as well. And we'll be doing a series of videos on the LED conversion, disassembling the factory radios, uh, removing the factory um, surface mount uh, bulb assemblies and putting surface mount LEDs and resistors in uh, to one, increase the intensity of the illumination. Two, give bright white light instead of that weird, funky green cast that's the original. And, you know, I'm just weird. I like OE radios. I'm not a fan of aftermarket radios, you know. It's just the look. I love the look of the factory stock. It's the way it's supposed to be. I'm crazy. Moving on. The cup holder. These always stick junk gets in them. I freed this one up once before. It's uh, sticking again, so I'll pull that apart and clean that once more. Uh, air conditioning is currently still working on patches. Uh, all the HVAC works. I had to find this uh, display panel out of uh, the junkyard because when I had patches, there were like three or four of these buttons missing and something else is broken on it. I can't recall now. Uh, Patches does have the original service man, uh, owner's manual, warranty cards, all of that good stuff. Uh, power locks do work. Power windows do work. Wipers front and rear, front and rear work. So do the sprayers, horn works. Lights all work. Power windows work. I uh, do not have factory fog light in patches, but we're going to be putting those JDM. Uh, fog lights and front bumper on here, but I do have a OE fog light switch and an OE fog light harness out of another car. I gutted everything out of it, so we're going to have factory, fun factory functioning. I cannot talk right now. Um, fog lights and patches for some better illumination. All the gauges. Fuel gauge was not working. Uh, I was stuck on the resting point when I first started patches the other day, I put about two gallons of ethanol free fuel out of a gas can I had in the garage in patches. And now I've mysteriously got right under half a tank of fuel. So yay me. Uh, ran patches for about an hour yesterday. I actually came over here yesterday to film this video, but realized that once I got here, I had left my camera equipment at the house. But patches gets up to temperature, holds operating temperature, fan cycle on and off as it should, no issues there. Patches had a new radiator put in after the collision four or five years ago, so shouldn't be any issues there. Put a new radiator cap on. Uh, pretty sure I put a new thermostat in. Might not have. Fires right up and holds a good idle it is a little um hesitant on startup the rpms want to drop really low and then come right back up and then it sort of finds its uh sea legs so to say on its idle so we're going to investigate the idle air control the throttle body all that stuff see if there's an issue there i have not tested fuel pressure in patches yet but i believe that the fuel pump it's probably finally starting to die a little bit. When I first tried to start patches in the video the other day, it took several key turns before I heard the fuel pump finally prime and run. So it's probably getting tired and probably a little low on PSI. So most likely we'll put a fuel pump in patches, but uh, we shall see on that. But uh, let's turn on the AC, go recirculate. It's about 80 degrees in here. Compressor just kicked on. Cool air is a blowing. Starting to feel good. So we're good there. 
when I got patches, there was a, an issue with the compressor. It was extremely loud at idle when engaged. The front bearing was squealing horribly. Got a $25 compressor from the salvage yard, put that on there. Same issue on that one, so I sort of gave up. For whatever reason, it's not making noise right now, and I don't want to jinx it, so as long as it's not making noise, it's not making noise. So I'm not going to worry about it because I don't want to pay, I think it's like $350 for a compressor for this car, almost exactly what I paid for the car. So, But if I have to replace the compressor, I'll replace it. You know, I've got a couple more junkyard ones I can test first to see, but uh, I'd rather pay $25 bucks than $320, $350. But, uh, I've not checked the CD player because who listens to CDs anymore, but radio and all works. Patches originally had gray seats, so I dyed the rear uh, seat black to match the WRX buckets. I do have factory WRX uh, floor mats for my 04. Seats fold and do like they should. Back to the rear, I finally found an OE cargo cover for patches. I do have a factory patch spoiler I have not installed. And we do have the clutch kit to talk about later. As far as no spare and jack and everything is as it should be from new still in this car. So with that said, we've looked at the interior and exterior. Let's go under the hood and see what we find. So I've sat for nearly five years without running and to have right at 300,000 miles on the clock, that just still runs extremely smooth. There are a few things that need to be addressed, but they're nothing extremely major or costly. So I'm gonna shut the car off and we're gonna look around the engine bay, see what we find wrong, jack the front end up, look underneath, see if we find anything underneath. Then jack up the rear, check under the rear. I'll have an in-depth breakdown cost analysis again, cost analysis again, just like we did for the 2005 Legacy GT, and see what we come up with on good old patches here. It's been quite a while since I put a fuel filter on patches. I believe I put it on right before I started stopped driving it, but it's five years old. Been sitting with five years uh, gas in it for five years without flow through it. So cheap part. I'm gonna put a fuel filter on there. Brake fluid is extremely dark. I'm gonna flush the brake fluid. Change the oil, of course. Battery, it needs a battery. This battery is uh, one I swap around the cars when I need to start them and move them around. It's usually kind of weak and needs a jump. Our OE headlight uh, pigtail melted and had some issues, so I had to get some aftermarket ones and wire them in. Uh, we're going to have to get away, do away with that anyway when we put the JDM headlights in because I believe they're a four wire and these are a three wire. Coolant was put in not long before, uh, maybe a year of driving on patches, but that needs to be replaced because it's been sitting in the uh, car for five years now. Time belt and water pump need to be addressed. I have no clue how old they are. I've been driving around on a hope and a prayer like a moron. I should have checked that much sooner. But uh, that's definitely going to get taken care of. I'm going to have to replace some of these uh, timing covers because they're cracked and broken. Got a lot of debris and oil build up on top of patches. We're going to put some uh, rocker cover gaskets on there. Clean up this general area. We've already rebuilt the power steering pump, cleaned up that. We've already deblued the alternator. Uh, no issues there. These belts were new. I don't know, 10,000 miles ago, but due to age, I'm probably going to replace them. They're starting to get a little bit of dry rot in them. Uh, check on our hoses, but they don't seem to be in too terrible of a condition. But hey, better safe than sorry. Uh, vacuum lines are all hard and brittle. They need to be addressed. Occasionally, I was getting a uh, EVAP code. I wonder why. It's probably from these uh, old cracked uh, dry rotted lines, clean the mass there, probably put an air filter in here. 
don't know how long it's been. These plug wires have been chewed on by rodents while catches this apart, so time for some plug wires. I don't think it was too long before I stopped dropping patches and I put plugs in it, but we're going to pull them out and see just in case. Oh, so they're pretty cheap and easy to do, especially on this car. Compared to the turbo models of the H6, they're right here on top, easy to get at. Uh, let's see. The main issue with patches is the release bearing for the clutch. I initially had not been hearing it since I started the car the last video but yesterday when i ran it for about an hour it finally started making some chirping so i've already got the clutch kit in the back of the car it's been in the car for five six years now we need to go ahead and install that new clutch and pressure plate and flywheel and everything in the kit put a starter on patches not too long before i stopped driving it so starter is good our we've got issues with the clutch cable uh it's kind of rigged up right now so we're gonna have to address that probably gonna put a new clutch cable on here just for the age of it and uh try to work on the hill climber i'm pretty sure if i remember right i got the hill climber working those that do not know what the hill climber clutch is on the older subarus what the hill climber did was on your clutch fork you have two cables you have one that goes to your heel climber and one that goes to your clutch pedal. So when you pull the clutch, push the clutch pedal, it pulls your fork and disengages your clutch. Well, simultaneously, it pulls that cable in the opposite direction, which works its way around over here under the master cylinder for your brakes and applies the brakes essentially. So say you're coming up to a stop on a steep incline. If you push your clutch in and hit your brakes to stop, as long as you're holding the clutch pedal in and release the brake pedal, the brakes are still applied and you will not roll back at the stop. So when it's time to start off from the stop, all you have to do is apply a little gas and come off the clutch as normal and the brakes release at the same time as the clutch grabs and you're away without having to you know, do a three pedal uh, dance to make sure you don't roll back or grabbing the handbrake or what have you. So neat little uh, thing on the older Subarus. Uh, it's kind of like the heel hold assist they have now on the cars, but a completely different system there. But same kind of uh, gist to it. Uh, like I said, the AC system is working. Uh, I'll probably evacuate the system and recharge it just to make sure we're totally full uh what else not seeing very much of anything topside but like i said when we pull the engine to out when we pull the engine to replace the clutch we're going to go ahead and reseal the um oil air separator plate the oil pump the uh oil pan replace the remain seal just get rid of all the uh oil leaks essentially all right so we got quite a bit of oil leakage here on patches uh, i'm not sure if we've got leaking out of the power steering rack or if it's all oil we'll have to address that when we get there but we do have torn inner tie rod boot uh off camera i did uh check the inner tie rods and they are worn so might as well put outer and inners on it while we're in there uh i have not checked the lower control arm bushing but i can visually see that they are worn and coming apart so lower control arm bushings are uh are a go what else do we got going on down here another one great great thing about patches southern car and totally rust free how many of you guys have seen a 95 legacy with factory paint still on the front or rear cross member look at there it's a combination of uh no salt and slag and a nice healthy sheen of dripping oil and power steering for the wood <laughs> 
that gives that uh, Subaru anti-corrosion resistance. But uh, to the front here, I'm pretty sure that the oil pump is leaking as well as probably the cam seals. I uh, don't know if you can see that. There's a glob of uh, oil there at the bottom of the timing cover as well as over here. So cam crank seals, all that needs to be replaced. When we have the engine out, we'll just do a full reseal overhaul gasket uh, kit. Our inner and outer boots on the CV axles front, uh, front side to side are both ripped. So we need two CV axles on the front. Uh, not sure how long it's been since the gear roll was changed in the transmission. So to service the transmission, oh, there's a ton of buildup on the transmission, but I believe it's uh, dripping oil that has gone uh, backwards as we've had uh, movement down the highway. This oil or power steering fluid has wrecked our rack bushings, so the rack bushings will need to be addressed as well. Uh, what else we got? I believe the front sway bars, I believe they're uh, making noise. I know the strut, all four struts are absolutely shot because as far as I can tell, they're all original and they clunk and rattle and everything else over every bump so well sway bar's tight so perhaps our sway bar is still all right along with our end links and mounts but uh we'll check this a little more uh thoroughly later on uh brakes pads and rotors uh have not checked the pad thickness but the rotors are extremely rusty so we'll have to see if I can uh, have enough meat to turn those down and put pads on it, or if the pads are still decent, we'll, if we turn them, we're going to put the uh, Disregard. If we turn them, we're going to have to put pads on them. Duh. I'm not thinking. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do know we're going to have to put a, uh, an exhaust manifold gasket. I believe the passenger side exhaust manifold gasket is leaking. I hear uh, some fluttering. This is, oh, sorry. This transmission mount might be shot. I'm not sure. Same as the motor mounts. So I'll have to get my pry bar out and check those to be sure. I'll check the... Um, Uh, control arm bushings at the same time. I don't know why I didn't think to get that. Actually, looks like the driver's side CV axle is good. It's just the passenger side that's uh, boots busted. And it is. So we'll put that passenger side CV axle in and then go from there. Uh, as far as that's concerned, our exhaust system is uh, all together with next to no rust on it whatsoever. Uh, we do have a little bit of uh, rust here at the uh, flanges, but uh, a new set of gaskets in there should uh, fix that right up. Uh, but that's mainly everything I see here on the front. So I will check the transmission mount. Oh, another thing to mention, I forgot to mention while I was inside the car, the shifter uh, shift joint has gotten a lot of play and is destroyed basically so we got a bunch of floppy shifter going up there but i did find in cleaning up the shop the other day i have a brand new uh torque solutions um joint for the shifter so freebie i guess i ordered two when i did it in the 98 legacy gt i don't recall now but hey we got it might as well use it so there's that um what else I think that's it for the front like i said i'll check those mounts get back to you when we get to the rear all right wanted to show you real quick what i was uh checking on the inner and outer uh tie rods as you can see there's a little bit of motion here but uh you can feel it you can feel a uh, bumping and if you uh watch the if you watch the inner tie rod you can see it moving it should not move it should be solid so there's play in those uh tie rod ends uh both lower ball joints 
are solid, but their boots are busted. So for 30 bucks a pop for OE ball joints, we're gonna put ball joints in the car. Uh, transmission mount has a little bit of wiggle in it, but it's still solid. Same as the engine mount. So I don't think we have any issue there. Check the uh, lower control arm bushings and they seem to still be uh, fairly tight. So they might not have to be replaced after all. And to the rear, we've got our factory Subaru muffler and full exhaust still intact. Less the guts of the cat. Undercoating peeling off and what do we say underneath? Rust? Nope. Factory paint still. So the only thing that I know of I've done back here was service this rear differential. That was one of the first things I did the patches when I got patches. So uh, as you can see, that's still halfway clean right there. So I know I did that, but while we're doing everything, we might as well go ahead and do that as well. So we're uh, on the same uh, maintenance schedule of everything. Uh, looks like both rear CV axles are still in good shape. Boots are not torn, no issue there. Um, due to the age of this thing, I can assume we're gonna put four wheel bearings and hubs in it just because of the way the uh, wheel bearings were in these cars. Um, rear sway bar is taut, no issues there in the links or the bushings. Do a quick check with the pry bar, check some of these uh, suspension bushings. Looks like our trailing arm bushings have gotten very tired. They probably need to be replaced. Uh, let's see. What else can we check? These rear diff bushings are really gone. They're splitting and cracked and everything else. So those need to be replaced. Ow. Uh, what else? First strut's already said that. Um, looks like possibly due to the markings here, the, the rear diff was replaced in patches, but that might be factory uh, paint marker inspection marks. It's hard to tell. I believe those are actually uh, factory inspection marker marks rather than uh, markings from a salvage yard marking a part. So other than that, everything looks really good and really clean still. Uh, I don't believe we've got any issues with the drive line, but uh, I have to drive it to see if we got any noises there or any noises anywhere else in the car really. Get up to speed on the highway again. Uh, so work needed seems to be fairly minimal and uh, some basic stuff, but uh, I will comprise a full list and make a breakdown sheet again and see what kind of money we need to put in package, put into patches to have it top notch for safety reliability wise to drive back and forth, uh, have as a little beater again. That is until I get stupid enough to yank out the EJ22, put an EG33, and maybe a six speed or a beefier five speed in it. So uh, we shall see which way we go in the long term. But uh, before I let y'all go, let me get my glove fire on. <laughs> So before I let y'all go and uh, we start talking about parts and uh, the like, one uh, closing shot for you to be super jealous of, check out this lower bolt. I bet you I could hit that with the impact and pull it right out of there. No rust, nothing. Need a car wash and blast all these cobwebs up out of here. But uh I'm not trying to rub it in, please don't hit me too much. But uh all right, so that's it. We've looked at everything basically. And uh ooh, might have to do the uh might be time for subframe bushings. Those are awfully wobbly. But 
Hey, it's rubber. Lots of uh, age and mileage will do that to it. So, still pretty minimal stuff. 